Hello everyone, welcome to the Cherry Heart podcast. I'm Sandra and this is a crafty podcast featuring crochet, knitting and sewing and other bits and bobs. Um, you can find the show notes for this podcast on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk just click the podcast tab at the top or I will link the ones for this episode down below if you're watching on a device and you can access the notes below. Um, welcome, welcome to the podcast. It's the Christmas special. I don't know why I just did an impression of a Muppet. Um, but yeah, it's the Christmas special so we come to sit by the Christmas tree. Um, it's very dim and dark today so I've actually pulled the net curtain back to try and get a little more light in here and I'm also recording on the other camera, the better camera. Normally I record on my front camera so I can see what I'm doing and this time I can't see what I'm doing so if I show you things I won't know if they're in focus or not or what you can actually see but we'll just go with it and see what happens. Um, oh, I forgot some of my beginning things, didn't I? Just that I'm Sandra Cherry HRT on Instagram and elsewhere around the web as Cherry Heart. That's it. That's all I have to say at the beginning. Um, I also hope the sound's going to be okay because everything's a bit further away in here. Um, it's a bit different to my normal setup. This is me. Normally when I put my hands out like that, I'd be knocking the camera over. Um, <laughs> but this time it's a bit further. So hopefully the sound will be okay. I've got my microphone on. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I hope it's alright. Anyway, enough of the garbage. Let's just crack on with it, shall we? Um, yes, I normally like to do a Christmas special at this time of year, which consists of coming to sit by the tree and me wearing a Christmas top, which I have on today my Jingle Bells top, um, which I got last year, I believe, in the sale, which is um, good, because it was a bargain. Um, oh, and I'm also wearing, very important, Christmas socks. Ooh. Uh, I made these last year, and I don't know what yarn I used, so that's helpful, isn't it? It was a collection of minis basically, I had to collect up different minis to get the colours I wanted because I particularly wanted this jade, which I know was from River Knits, and the red and pink I think came from a Beehive Yarns little mini set. The white I had already, that was from Rosie's Moments, I've no idea if you can see this by the way. And the mint, I can't remember where the mint one came from. helpful. <clears throat> anyway, let us get into it. So first of all, oh, a little tiny, tiny bit of podmin, just to say that um, as it's December and I'm doing my Cherry Hearts Christmas presents, um, I hope you're enjoying it if you've been following along as I've been opening the doors. Um, on my sort of, I made a little kind of advent calendar graphic. It's only got six doors on it, so it's not really an advent, but whatever, let's just go with that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I've opened three of the doors on the advent calendar and um, three more to go. So I hope you're enjoying it. And if you've missed the one so far, don't worry, there's three more days. The three more patterns I'll be releasing with some kind of discount or deal that you can um, get off those patterns for a limited time. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to briefly mention that. Now we can get on with it properly. Let's begin with what I've done. So first thing to show you, very exciting, is my Elton cardigan. So, <coughs> oh my goodness, so exciting I'm choking. Um, yes, so excited to have finished this. I haven't got it on at the moment, obviously, because I was wearing my Christmas thing. Um, I don't. I could try and put it on over the top, but I don't think it's really going to work, is it? So, I'll take a picture. No, I'll take a little, you know, bit of me prancing around in it afterwards, and I'll pop it in here for you.
but hopefully you've now seen it on but yes so so happy um, I've even got the buttons on and everything as you can see um, I went with just little mother of pearl buttons because they are one of the only buttons that I had enough of all the same um, I've got an awful lot of buttons but most of them are um, you know just oddments that I've been donated you know from grandmas and then other people who go oh you like buttons don't you have some of these that my grandma used to have um, yeah so I've got lots of oddments and odd buttons and some lovely ones in there but um, not many that match but yes um, what can I tell you about this that I haven't already told you before a hundred times the yarn it's the Elton pattern by the way so I'll just quickly go through the details again even though if you've been here before I'm very sorry you've heard these. So it's the Elton cardigan. It's a pattern by Hokey Locatelli. Um, this, see, I'm simulating wearing it now. Um, the yarn I used, uh, so the main colour is a Mr B yarns and it's called We're Going on a Bear Hunt and I love it. And the mohair is a Polish yarn that I was gifted and I didn't have the amount that it said in the pattern but as you can see, all my sleeves have stripes. I had enough, I had enough to finish. I only had a tiny little bit left, only a few grams left. So it went right to the wire, but I'm really happy actually, really very happy that I managed to finish it with the yardage I had. And I've got also quite a lot of my second ball of the Mr B yarns left. I probably have measured it, weighed it, I mean. Um, I've probably put it in my Ravelry project page if you particularly want to know how much I use but I did have a decent amount of the other colour left definitely enough for a pair of socks I would say so I might well do that with what is left but yes, very happy um, blocked it out um, not too aggressively but it has neatened it up a lot, I think. It does look a lot nicer because when I was, especially with the mohair, when, when I was knitting, quite a lot of the stitches did look kind of uneven and I was a bit worried about it because you use quite a large needle or and I went up a size from what's in the pattern as well. So it's quite large for the yarn. But yeah, overall, it looks really lovely, I think. So the other, only modifications I made was I made the sleeves um, just a couple of stripes longer than it said in the pattern um, and I just did the bind off differently. You're supposed to do a tubular bind off um, on all of the edges um, and it was the bottom one that I did first and it was just so many stitches I just couldn't face the idea of doing a tubular cast on and this um, you know I just cast off normally but loosely and that seemed to work out okay it still seemed perfectly stretchy enough so I just went with it everywhere I just did it on all the cuffs and the neck and everything as well so yeah super happy with that so I think I can call that a successful garment because I've tried it on and I can definitely actually see myself wearing it so that's, what did I make recently? Yeah, I made a, the Tigna or Tenga, however you say it, top recently. And I've been wearing that, not so much now because it's short sleeved and it's get, got colder. But I've definitely been wearing that and I've got my crochet jumper and I wear that as well. So that's, that's a couple of, oh and my, um, oh what was the top with the linen? Water lilies, was it called? Anyway, some other top I made, so that's a few things that I've handmade that I do actually wear and consider successful. Which is good because that's one of the things I wanted to do this year, was to make some more garments. And I feel that I have, so yes, that's very satisfying. Right, let's put that over there. Other things I have finished. Let's go with the more successful one first. 
Ooh. which is this basket. Um, I wish I wouldn't um so much. I had this basket in my living room and it had magazines in it um, and it was brown at the time. Um, there I go again. But now we've changed the living room and it's sort of quite a bit paler in here now and actually coordinated, which none of my other rooms are, <laughs> really. Um, yeah, we, it's kind of stuck out, looked a bit out of place, so I wanted to um, revamp it. And my first thought was that I would just paint it and then bring it back in here, but there isn't really a good place to put it in here now. And also, the magazines that were sat in it, They've just been there forever. It's not like I put them in there and I'm referring to them. So they just don't need to be sat around. Um, and I've got a little space where I can just put a few magazines. And that's all I need, really. Just um, a couple that I'm actually currently reading or want to keep for some reason. A couple of foodie ones I keep hold of. But most of the others I just went through, saw if there was anything I wanted to keep, a recipe or anything I wanted to keep ripped that page out and got rid of the magazines. So as I don't need this for storing magazines anymore, I thought it would be good for storing yarn. Of course, what else? Um, yes, and I've put my yarn for my white blanket in. As you can see, it's already all loaded up. But yes, I because I wanted to put yarn in it and it's... Um, you know, the basket with edges, they can be a little bit rough and they can catch the yarn, can't they? So I wanted to put a little lining in it as well. So I've just whipped that up. Um, it's quite simple, it's white. Can, how am I going to show you this? Let's take some of these out. It's just white, it's only the edging that's the stripy fabric is what I'm trying to tell you. And then once you go down a bit, I just use some plain white um, cotton that I had in stash. So it's quite thin, but it's enough just to protect it, I think. And then I just wanted a little something else on the edge to make it look pretty. Um, I wish I could tell you clearly how I did this, but in my usual fashion, I just kind of bodged it and <laughs> made it up as I went along. Um, yeah, if you've watched the blogs, no, the vlogs by the way, because I'm doing vlogmas again, um, I did put some footage in of me making this, <laughs> like not like footage of how to make it, but just the fact that I was making it, and you would have seen me probably struggle a bit, as I did so, sewing around, <laughs> that's kind of always been a bit of my nemesis, there must be some sort of proper way of doing it well. But if there is, I don't know it. But anyway, I, I managed, I managed. I forest gumped my way through it and got a base on there. And then I just attached these bits separately, the little uh, stripey bits separately, and then just put ties on to hold them in place so that I could still have the handles coming through nicely. And I think it, it kind of works, it broadly works. And it's very good for storing this yarn in, so that's good. Um, and all of that yarn is for my mystery white blanket that... Um, again, I've spoken about it before on the podcast, so if you are not new, if you are returning you will know about this. But basically I did some samples for this blanket that I saw in a magazine. That's me sampling out different corners. Um, that's sort of one of the pattern pieces. Um, yes, yeah, so it was a lovely um, vintage crochet blanket that a lady in Sweden had in her house and she was in one of the interiors magazines that I saw and I thought that's fabulous. So now I've worked out all my samples and how the pattern is going to be. Now I've got my yarn, 
So I'm ready to go. Um, and I think I'll probably do that over the Christmas, well start it, won't do the whole thing obviously, but I'll probably start that over the Christmas break I think, just in those kind of days in between the Christmas and New Year when hopefully it'll all be nice and relaxing and time to just sit and crochet. I thought that would be a nice little thing to start then. So I've got my samples in my bag by my lovely friend Amelia. And I've got my little um, West Green Lofts pin on there that came in the advent calendar. Let's see if I can show you that. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> so I pop that on there. I just love the fabric on this one. So that's there, ready to go. Oh, and the only other thing I've done is another bit of sewing, but not entirely successful. In fact, I say it's done, it's not actually completely finished. So it's this, which is supposed to be, well, it is, a needle cosy. Um, I was having a little bit of, oh, I've got a sequin on me. Ooh, sequin. Um, I was having a little bit of a sort out of some of my knitting needles and I've got quite a few DPNs, even though I don't really use them. And I wanted a case to put all of my sock knitting circular needles in. I've got quite a few um, fixed circulars that haven't got any case. They've just got their sort of plastic packages, which is all right, but they're all in a bit of a mess and it's just easier if they're all together in one case. So I thought I would make one, but I haven't been very <laughs> successful. So I've used this fabric that is actually from my sewing machine cover, um, which I hope won't horrify you too much. But my sewing machine cover I made years and years and years ago and it never quite fit right. I made like the outside in these hexagons, which is quite special fabric for me because these are all fabrics that have been salvaged from my little poppets baby clothes and toddler clothes, sort of all her little dresses and whatnots, and a few other bits in there. But um, I used to, I still do, just, you know, if there's, she's got something that's got a really lovely fabric, I'll sort of save things once she's grown out of them, and if there isn't a suitable hand-me-down option, and then I get to use the pretty fabric, which is nice. Anyway, let's get back to the point. So I made the sewing machine cover. So the outside of the cover, that fit over quite nicely. Then I made a sort of just a lining and just a very simple sort of um, box shape, you know, just to fit over the sewing machine. So that was fine. And then I put the, um, just a binding to around the bottom. I hope this is making sense. Um, I put a binding around the bottom and then once I'd put that on, I couldn't actually fit it very easily over my sewing machine. It went over the top, but the bottom bit where it's a bit wider, it was actually a really tight fit and you could pull it over, but it kind of distorted it. So it wasn't great. So I unpicked some of the binding and a little bit of the lining. I think it was the lining that wasn't big enough as well. That's another problem. I don't know how I managed to make it the wrong size, but anyway. Um, yeah, so I just unpicked a little bit so that I had enough of it flapping open to just ease it so I could fit it over the sewing machine. And that's the way it stayed for the past goodness knows how many years and I normally just move the unpicked bits of the back. And I'd always meant to fix it, you know, just get a bit more of the binding out because I had some tucked in. And I thought, oh, I'll just re-sew it with a, you know, a little bit more binding length, it'll be fine. But actually when I looked at it, when I did finally look at doing that it was the lining that didn't fit either. So anyway in conclusion I thought I would make a another one and make it properly this time so it fits. So I've salvaged all my 
hexagon fabric. I've unpicked it all, salvaged all that. And I'm going to have some on the sewing machine still, but I don't think I'm going to have the whole cover of all hexagons anymore. I'm going to change it. So I've used a little bit of that fabric in this. That is a very long way, long winded way of telling you that, isn't it? Um, yeah, so I thought it'd be nice to do that. Um, it's too floppy. Is So the first problem is it's too floppy. I didn't reinforce the fabrics enough. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really sort of hold and everything kind of flops around. Not very good. Um, and then my other mistake was I was merrily making it and I'd folded up these bits to make the pockets. That was all looking good. And then I came to make this top flat and I thought, oh, I've got loads of fabric, like way more than this. I had loads up here. Come down to show you that. I had loads up here. And I thought, well, that's odd, because if I put these in the back here, this is this length is more than enough with the flap down. I don't need, like, yards up here. What on earth am I doing? Anyway, so I snipped it off, carried on making the case. And then I went to put them in, and I put these grey ones in first. And I realise these grey ones are actually longer than all the other ones I have. Now I wanted to keep these just because they are a little bit um, thicker, whereas most of them are kind of sock knitting size, but I thought if I ever do need some TPNs in a different size, these would be handy, so I'll keep hold of them. But, yes, I've got them mucked it up and chopped it off but they fit in the front they still fit so that's okay so this is still usable it's a bit floppy and awkward but it is still usable but I'm not very happy with it as you can see well I don't know if you can see if all my um, lines are still there my invisible pen has uh, not been completely invisibilized which is a word that I just made up. <laughs> um, yes, so I will probably fill it up with my rest of my DPNs. I'll probably use it anyway. It's not completely finished yet because I need to add a little tie on it to hold it together and it needs its bum sewing up. But yeah, not very happy with it really. It was one of those ones where I sort of came out of the same room a little bit in disgust and was like, oh, well, that was a disaster. But looking at it again now, I guess it is still usable just not very good. Socks. It's Christmas time, I have to make some socks. So this is my uh, So Sweet Violet bag that I got in her advent calendar last year. There's my little Marjorie bird on. Um, and I am using my Mr B yarns again. And this is I'm the Gingerbread Man. Let's get that up to show you. Um, let's show you it in the cake as well. So this I got from uh, Nottingham Yarn Festival? No, Nottingham Yarn Exhibition, I think it's called. Um, a few weeks ago, where I went with the lovely Sam from Betsy Makes, my yarny friend. Um, yeah, and I was particularly looking out for this one. They'd been um, posting it on their Instagram page, and I knew they were going to be there. So yes, I kind of made a beeline for this and got this. So now I'm enjoying knitting this up. Got my little gingerbread charm on there, which just is a perfect match, isn't it? And I did a little, I've got a, I th I'm sure I've told you about this before, haven't I? Must have just talked about the yarn. Um, I've got a little contrast colour for the heels and toes. And I've just put that single little line that I sometimes do around the top. So I just cast on in the contrast colour and then immediately change to the main colour. So yes, very happy with that. Um, I think I've probably got enough for a leg, so I need to put a heel in now. Um, I don't think there's anything else much to say about that, is there? I'm just doing a vanilla sock, so plain, 
um, which is pretty, it's going to use my pick and mix pattern. Um, yeah, that's all there is to say about that, I think. I'll carry on that over the next few weeks. Um, it's coming. It's not taking very long to knit up because it's just vanilla, so you can just mindlessly watch it, um, knit it in front of the telly. But I haven't done any for a while because I've been distracted by other things. Um, where's my, oh, it's on here. <laughs> so the other project that I had on the go the same time as I had my Elton on the go is my English paper piecing project. So my Elton seemed like the never ending project that I've been working on for like a millennia, a millennia? <laughs> a millennia or so. And this is my other real slow moving project. But I'm a bit more okay with this one being slower moving because it's newer. Um, yes, and this is some hexagons that I'm putting together for a laptop cover that I'm going to make. And here are my lovely hexagons all waiting to go. Um, yeah, I've spoken about this before as well. This whole episode is very repetitive, isn't it? I'm so sorry. Please don't go. Um, yeah, so I finally got quite a few made up um, around, you know, around the little templates or fabric. And now I've finally started sewing them together. So this bit, this size is probably about half of what I need. So I need to fill in this corner, which is just a few more. And then I need sort of another amount. The same size again, I think. And then I can contemplate making that into a laptop cover. So that's chugging along, but that's okay, that can go slow. Don't mind that. And this I need to show you is my gorgeous rope bowl that I got from So Sweet Violet. Um, she'd mentioned these in a podcast that she was thinking of making some to sell. And I thought, oh, please do, they're gorgeous. So I thought, oh, I'm going to have to stalk her like a crazy person to get one of these because they're going to be in demand and lo and behold they were very much in demand um, but I managed to get one so I was very excited this is like my Christmas come early when this turned up I was just so ridiculously pleased to get one it was unbelievable just you know Jules from So Sweet Violet just does things so beautifully I'm saying this like you know her I'm assuming you know her or know of her know of her podcast because if you don't then immediately go over and check her out well not immediately like finish washing this first but then after that immediately go over and check her out because she's just gorgeous and she makes the most perfect things and I knew she would just do it so well because I think there are tutorials for how to make these so I did sort of think I could have a go myself and then I contemplated what I might be able to come up with compared to a slice of Jules Perfection and I thought well they just I think a slice of Jules Perfection would be much better <laughs> and it is I know it is so yes yeah, very very pleased about that that's kind of my incoming goodie I guess for the week and then the other last thing that I am working on at the moment are these I got some Christmas balls <laughs> oops I'm dropping the Christmas balls these are going to be a little garland. Yes, I made some of these before. Um, I think it was this year, at Easter time, in different colours, um, for a little Easter garland. Talking is so hard this episode, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> for all the ums, oh gosh. Yes, so, I want to, um, I didn't have a garland that kind of fit in. This is slightly paler than we normally do in here, but because 
we've changed the living room and I've got a little cupboard thing built in my alcove now. We needed a smaller tree because my old tree was too big and it wouldn't fit anymore in anymore. So we had to get another tree, which I wasn't very happy about buying another artificial tree. But on the other hand, the other one we have had for like well, over 15 years, definitely. And it will still get used. It's not being used this year because um, we're having people here this year for Christmas. So normally I'll put another tree up in the dining room just because we're a bit obsessed around here with the whole Christmas thing. Um, so yeah, in other years it will probably go up in the dining room. So it won't be wasted. And this one I'll keep for a long time as well. So but once we've decorated this tree, the garlands that I normally use on my fireplace kind of just looked the wrong colour and completely out of place um, and just didn't really work at all so I thought I would make another little one using these little balls. I quite like, um, I've got it in my craft room actually hanging behind, I don't know if you've seen hanging behind me on the podcast, just a little garland with the felt balls on strung onto a string and I really like those. But you can just make crochet up these little balls instead. And uh, yeah, I just thought that was a good solution. I really liked how it worked when I did it earlier in the year for Easter. So I thought I'd make a Christmassy version. I just love all these colours together. I think they'll go. That white one. Got him. Um, yes, I think that will work quite nicely. And I'm I think I've got enough there as well now, so I'll string them up after this and just make sure I've got a long enough length. Um, yeah, I'm seriously tempted to do absolutely loads and have them hanging on the tree. That would be so nice, but it would it would take a while, wouldn't it, to do enough little tiny fiddly. Well, they're not that fiddly to do actually. They're quite easy. They're very easy to do, but. It'd take a while to do enough to cover a whole tree, wouldn't it? That might be a bit ambitious. Maybe, you never know. Um, so the pattern for these is on Attic24's blog. She did a little garland on her fireplace with little balls, and that's where I uh, originally saw it and what made me want to make one in at Easter. Um, I think they're just called little balls on her website. I'll pop the link in show notes anyway so you'll be able to find it. Um, yeah, I think I just modified mine slightly because I start with a magic loop and I think she works into a chain or something. But... And the gold ones are I had to change as well actually because they are made from a thinner, you know, more thread. Oh my goodness! Seriously with the chalking! So they're made with a thinner yarn. It's like a metallic, well, as you can see, a metallic crochet thread. This is the Twillies. Is that the right word? I think that's right, Twillies. I think it's Twillies. Um, thread. And these ones are all um, ancient, old, Debbie Bliss baby cash merino bits of stash that I had left over. So it's a good way of using up little stash bits because you only need a tiny amount of yarn. I had a tiny, tiny amount of this pink one and I managed to get six little balls out of it. So, yes, happy with that. I might make another one actually after I've made this one. There was another crochet garland that I had um, and it's hanging up in the other room. And I made that for the mantelpiece originally, but I just made little crochets, crochet discs. Um, basically, because I was too lazy to do this first time, it occurred to me that I could do crochet up little balls, or I could get little felted balls. But a lot of the places where they sell the felted balls, they give you an assorted pack, and I don't want an assorted pack. I very, you know me, I want certain colours. <laughs> don't want to leave it to chance I'm very particular about that kind of thing so I don't like the idea of just getting a mixed pack or if you and then if you can select the colors it just works out really quite expensive to get quite a few colors 
So this seems like a better option to me, because although it requires a bit of effort, it's all from stash that I've got. So it doesn't cost anything, which is better. It's better, isn't it? Um, okay. So patterns in progress, there isn't really any. Um, everything's kind of on hold. I kind of made sure to clear everything up pretty much for the beginning of December, because... Um, I knew I wanted to do Vlogmas, and I knew I wanted to do the um, Advent pattern release thing. So I didn't want to sort of be working on loads of patterns and commissions and things during December because it just gets just gets so busy. Um, yes, so the only pattern in progress I've really got on the go is the old kind of white blanket thing. Not that I'm doing much with it at the moment. I've taken I've sort of worked out the pattern as far as I can, so I'll just start making it now and make sure everything works out before I go any further with that. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably it really. No incoming goodies to speak of, apart from my lovely little bowl. Oh, and advent candles, of course. I've got some uh, advent candles, so oh, really enjoying those. I do love a yarn advent candle. It's like a little present every day in December up to Christmas. It's very exciting. <laughs> I think when you get older as well, it's, you know, you don't have so much fun stuff to look forward to that's actually going to be under the tree. So kind of making the most of the lead up and the anticipation of the big day, which can be a little bit, well, it's just a lot more work, isn't it, when you're a grown up? It was great when I was a kid and everyone else was doing the work and I was just opening good stuff and having fun and playing <laughs> but now you have to make dinner and you know host look after people make sure they've got drinks make sure they've got enough to eat make sure the gravy doesn't go horrifically wrong yes that is a story um <laughs> but yeah but it'll be good it'll all be good of course Yes, I'll probably come back in January anyway, and I might do a little bit of bullet journal chatter if that's something anyone is interested in, I'm not sure if it is. But yes, I might do a little bit of that as well as share what I've been up to over Christmas, obviously. But uh, yeah, we can worry about all of that stuff later. It's still this year, we've still got Christmas to come and it all to look forward to. So I hope you have a very wonderful time, however you spend this time of year, whether you just get to have a little bit of time off or whether you do the whole Christmas thing and or the whole family thing or whatever. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a really lovely time and get some nice peaceful moments in there too. Some nice crafting, relaxing moments. Those are the best bits, aren't they? Um, and I will try and do the same. And I will see you on the other side. Thanks so much for watching. This whole year, actually, that goes for. Thank you so much for watching and staying with me this whole year. Um, it's so appreciated. And all your lovely comments. You're all so lovely. And I'm very lucky. Oh, I'm getting Christmas introspection again. <laughs> I'll go and I'll let you go. Thank you for watching again and I'll see you in the new year. Bye. We needed a new one in here, so we've got one. So, in conclusion, oh my God. This is awful. <laughs> I'm going to have to cut so much of this there. Um. <laughs> I've lost my ball. Sadness. Oh, such melancholy. I love it. What a load of our waffle. My bad. Let's edit it.